I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, wherever you are, wherever you're watching this uh, broadcast from. I'm so blessed to have you watch me today. You know, there's too much going on in the world. There's too much on the phone, on TV, on radio, uh, in houses, at schools, where you work. But if you choose to watch my videos, I bless you for that. May you reap a harvest out of what you do uh, to just and watch me today. I, I'm going to tell you um, what I feel in my heart today is that I think we who believe in Jesus Christ um, are in a season of speed. I feel that the Holy Spirit is releasing speed in our spirits and those that are able to catch up with this speed are the ones that number one are going to win the crown of life number two they are the ones that are going to save the world number three they are the ones that are going to heal the sick and they are the ones that have chosen to be bold and separate themselves from the crowd um, Father God loves everybody, but he is trusting us, we who are still breathing, who have teeth, who have a tongue, who have eyes and ears, we who have feet and hands, we who wake up in the morning and can talk. He's trusting us to do something for kingdom of God, for Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, before I even say something about me, uh, a depressed young girl who is going through depression or they have mental illness or uh, they are orphans or they are uh, widows or they are, uh, I don't want to use the word prostitutes or homosexuals or uh uh, they are called addicts or they are called agents of darkness or agents of the devil. Those people are going to be saved by you. They are not going to be saved by Jesus firstly. They are going to be saved by you. By the word you tell them. By the prayers you pray for them. By the, 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 the verses you send to them. I feel that we got to catch up with speed everybody says speed speed there's gonna be speed we have to catch up with speed and um i'll tell you that some of us have been graciously touched saved told by the spirit of speed that was released to us, but we are also to catch up with it by obeying the voice of God and the voice of the Holy Spirit. I grew up a born again young girl who didn't know the word of God. All I knew was sin is bad. I'm a born again Christian. I cannot sin. But wait a minute. One day I fell into temptation, regardless of the circumstances that were surrounding me. And I ended up in a very bad place that I don't want anyone to experience the pain I went through. And therefore, years passed. I left Uganda. I was going to get killed. The Lord saved my life, brought me to America on fire for God, preaching in malls, in stores, and, and praying for people in their houses. And I would see miracle signs and wonders. But I'm going to tell you, the enemy surrounded me, tormented me, tortured me, harassed me not to speak Jesus, not to speak the word of God, and most importantly, not to read the Bible. These days, I walk with my Bible because wherever I am, whether I'm on the train, whether I'm on the aircraft, it's right behind me here. I walk with my Bible because... There's a time the Lord gave me grace and I read the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. But there are things I captured. 
I captured the love of God for his people when I saw Moses, how he fought for people. I, be, I read the book of Mark. I said, mm, we can heal the sick in the name of Jesus. And this is amazing. The Lord had released a supernatural grace upon my life that even before I went to a place, the Lord would always be there with me to use me, deliver his people, speak to ministers. And one thing I remember, as a young girl, everybody said, oh my goodness, she's so young. I went to this bishop who was one of, you know, Mr. T.D. Jakes' uh, uh, father, spiritual father here in Massachusetts, in Matapan. And I go there, she's like, she's very young, but see what she's talking about. And that day Jesus gave me a sweet message, and that message was called the crown. I wrote this message. I prayed for this message, and I stood to minister on the pulpit, and I saw the move of the Holy Spirit, and I saw the anointing of God, and I was talking about righteousness, I was talking about holiness. I was talking about, I didn't know the love of God. All I knew was, guys, a righteous person is protected and blessed. But hear my story. As an evangelist who was on fire, being surrounded by this man, the tyrant, the evil man, he made sure he brings me down. I stopped reading the Bible. I became so angry at Jesus. And one time I told Jesus, Jesus, I think I'm about to deny you. I'm like, I'm about to deny you. I couldn't pray. I depended on alcohol. I was a moving pharmacy. I had lost my, my mind. So people would call it mental illness, but there were demons from hell. And little by little, the Lord began to introduce me to things, to churches, to ministers who ministered to me. But the woman that the Lord used in my life, I met her in Celebration International Church. There was Reverend Jacqueline, but there's another reverend, another pastor. And this is what she told me. She, uh, some people were saying in the church, oh, she's so anointed, blah, blah, blah. But I was still attacked by the enemy. And the woman told me, listen to a still, small voice. Now me... I don't know that. I think the Holy Spirit is the one who knew that, those words. Because me, I didn't know those words. Even if I was a born again Christian. And guess what? After a while, I had begun working as a CNA in America. And um, I having these wonderful clients who are very patient with me. I thank you, Sandra. I, I told her, Sandra, I'll be talking about you all the time. And Lucy went to be with the Lord. And that we'll pray together. And Sandra told me, Rich, I think you're going through spiritual warfare. And we prayed all sorts of prayers. But I'm going to tell you something. One day, early in the morning, in the place called Brighton, in Massachusetts, the Lord visited me. I had given up. Me, I would wake up in the morning. I say, oh, I woke up in the morning? How did I wake up? I, had, I was going through things that I cannot even tell people. The presence of evil was around me. But I remind you that in Kampala, a rich man was forcing me to deny Jesus and told me there is no God, that Jesus is a mere man. And I told him I'll pray and pray until when Jesus delivers me. Jesus is everywhere. And so, in April 2016, the Lord met me in Brighton. I knelt down and I said, the Lord is my shepherd. Mukama ye msumba wangi. Seta agenga. Angala miza mudu ndire liyo mdomuto. Antuwa la kumabali agama za matefu. Akomiawe meme yange. I didn't know the power of that word. But it says, he restores my soul. My soul was too far. And the Lord did it. He used grace, mercy, love, most importantly power. The Holy Spirit visited me. He's very quick and very fast. In a twinkle of an eye. He had redeemed me from the paths of darkness. I was so excited. I began to share my testimony. And yet that time maybe I was supposed to keep quiet. But the day he told me, after a month, he came back. And he told me, Rachel, read Galatians chapter 5. Where he talks of the fruit of the spirit. He knew that I was damaged from the time I was little. He knew that I was damaged, had been damaged by some men. He knew that I had been damaged by pain, 
by Satan, the evil one. He never stopped there. He introduced me to the book of 2 Peter chapter 2, where he talks of there are so many uh, prophets that are going to rise up amongst you, and they're going to teach destructive heresies. He told us, but God served the preacher of righteousness. Hallelujah. He did not stop there. He began to show me scripture. The book of Matthew where he says, away from me, evil doers. Could I continue to do evil? No. Evil had to come to an end. I used to be a child. I used to do things that are even embarrassing. I'm like, oh my goodness. Am I the one who did that? Yes. But little by little, he began to walk with me. He began to teach me the book of Jude. Intercede for the lost Rachel. Go and save other people from the fire. I call it the doxology scripture. The book of Jude is very powerful. He showed me the book of First John. I didn't know the word of God. I didn't know the gospels. You know why? Because from the time I was young, from the time I was seven, I had been captivated by a false Christ. I had been captivated by Lucifer and Jezebel. I had been captivated by darkness, by ignorance. And here he is. He opened up my eyes to study scripture. He began to teach me how to pray for my enemies. I tell people the wonderful gospel of Jesus must be preached. We are in the season of speed. Are you ready to catch it? Are you ready to stand? Are you ready to stand? Are you ready to stand and oppose false doctrines? Are you ready to stand and save the witch? Are you ready to stand and save the false prophets? Now these days, sometimes every day, I pray for the people that I know that were mega pastors in Uganda, but they were under the doctrine of Jezebel. They supported sexual immorality. One time I went to this church of a big mighty woman of God in Uganda who would even bring Mr. Bonky in Kampala. And I took this man who was married. I had gone to two pastors who would tell me, does the guy have money? Oh, God has shown me he's your husband. And yet the man was married to a Muslim woman who ended up bewitching me to a point of death. And when I went to this mighty prophet of God, quote unquote, who didn't know the gospel, this is what she said. She didn't tell me repent. She didn't open Revelation 2.20. Neither did she open Matthew 7. Neither did she intercede for us. Say in the name of Jesus, Satan, Lucifer, Jezebel, get out of these people. This man is married and this woman is supposed to serve God. No. She said, Ajalo Koka, period. But I, I ended up like this. And I'm going to tell you, the journey that I've gone through is to save ministers that are crying, that are suffering, tormented, and tortured, and deceived. You can walk away from the false Christ. You cannot be a counterfeit spirit. You cannot be tapping into people's spirits. Do not allow fame to use you. Do not allow greed to use you. Do not allow deception to use you. Do not you tap into truth. I tell people, did you see Exodus 20? Have you encountered this mighty God? Deny Satan. Deny Lucifer. Deny Jezebel. Deny fame. Deny famous, founded, rooted, false doctrines. And stand in the doctrine of truth. Say, I worship the Lord thy God and him alone now serve. I worship the true living God according to John 17. I'm not going to be a fake pastor. I'm not going to be a fake apostle. I'm not going to be a fake worshiper. Tap into God yourself. Do not remain in sin. Anybody who is not one with the vine is liable to tapping into a false Christ. You got to separate yourself from human spirits. The way you do it, don't try to copy nobody. Go and study the word yourself. Study the gospel yourself. You've been having 10 meetings a day. You've been having so many programs and shows. And yet you have to watch this. Do, before you watch any minister, go to the vine. Study. I have uh, different uh, ministries in Kampala while I wind up. I, I've started so far three. I'm coming to the fourth one. I'm planting minist ministries. Prayer centers, fellowships, chapels. And 
I grew up from missionary schools, and I was a daughter of a reverend, a reverend canon in Uganda, and I saw how the enemy dropped him down. And me myself as a young girl who was a believer, I saw how the enemy dropped me down to the rock bottom. Hell is painful. Hades is painful. But the worst is knowing that God and his son have given us his truth and refused to read the truth. Things have changed. Are you ready to catch up with speed? Are you ready to invest your time in the word of God? Are you ready to change your character? Discipline. If you are going to be a minister, are you ready to be disciplined, to be well-mannered, to know how to intercede for the dying people, to know how to intercede for the dying souls? Are you ready to sacrifice your life for others? Our master is still interceding. God is interceding for us. We as the body of Christ, we are in the season of speed. Why did I start doing this broadcast today before entering church? I was somewhere in Tennessee and um, I began to teach these young girls to, to preach the gospel and sing songs with me. And today I was like, are they doing what I, I showed them to do? Because you got to copy what is good. You got to tap into the grace to preach. Do not just wake up and say, oh, you know, I'm sick. Let me call a pastor. You know, I need money. Let me call a pastor. You know, I'm in debt. Let me call this prophet. That is the reason I perished. And now Jesus has served me to help you. Ladies and gentlemen, catch up with speed. Read the gospel. Share what you read to other people. Intercede for other ministers. Intercede for the worshipers. Intercede for your family members. The enemy will try to stop you. But stand and catch up with his speed. And you're going to see the salvation of the Lord. Remember, you will win the crown of life. Only if you tap into the grace of God. Vine, read the gospels, share the gospel, pray for other people. And stand not to be defeated. Remember, Lucifer is a loser. And our God is the winner. I worship the Lord thy God and him alone I'll serve. Once again, Evangelist Kela Kisa, God bless you. Thank you for following. Father, I thank you for everybody who has been watching this broadcast. Bless them. Give them the grace to catch up with speed and stand and share the word of truth everywhere in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. If you um, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and share this video, let us catch up with speed together. Let us win the crown of love. And remember, Matthew 7, 2 Peter 2, and Jude. That's the way we do it. And God richly bless you. Hallelujah.